song turn to page 236 amazing grace page 236 Turn to pages, I mean, uh, Psalm 81, it's on page 786 in my Bible, though probably not in your Bible, Psalm 81, the Bible says to the chief musician upon Giddeth, a psalm of Asaph, sing aloud unto God our strength. Make a joyful noise unto the God of Jacob. Take a psalm and bring hither the timbrel, the pleasant harp with the psaltery. Blow the trumpet in the new moon in the time appointed on our solemn feast day. For this was a statute for Israel and a law of the God of Jacob. This he ordained in Joseph for a testimony when he went out through the land of Egypt, where I heard a language that I understood not. I removed his shoulder from the burden. His hands were delivered from the pots. Thou callest in trouble, and I delivered thee. I answered thee in the secret place of thunder. I approved thee at the waters of Meribah. Selah. Hear, O people, and I will testify unto thee. O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me, there shall be no strange god in thee, neither shalt thou worship any strange god. I am the Lord thy God, 
which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. But my people would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would none of me. So I gave them up to their own heart's lust, and they walked in their own counsels. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. I should have subdued their enemies, and turned my hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him, but their time should have endured forever. He should have fed them also with the finest of the wheat, and with honey out of the rock should I have satisfied thee. Let's pray. Dear God, please be with us tonight and convict in our hearts and um, show us our great need for you tonight. Help us, as we're looking in your word here, not to, uh, not to just gloss over it or to ignore what your word says, but to have hearts tender to the conviction of the Holy Spirit and uh, to have our voices attuned, or to ears attuned to hear your voice to speaking to us and uh, help us not to have stubborn and hard hearts, but to see uh, that we need to rely on you and uh, to rest in you for everything, not to be self-sufficient, but uh, to find all our sufficiency in you, to find um, everything in you. Help us not to have hearts which replace you with anything in our lives, but to seek you and you alone. In Jesus' name, amen. This psalm was written by um, a man named Asaph, of course, through the inspiration of God's Holy Spirit. This man we don't really know a lot about. <clears throat> they say either that he was a uh, the uh, chief musician at the time of Solomon. They, some, perhaps he is identified as being that man, or there's also another fellow they think perhaps he might have been a lot later. It's not really too clear which he was, but... Um, God used him to write about, I think, 12 or 13 psalms here. It's very, they're all a very interesting bunch of psalms. And this psalm uh, is kind of an interesting psalm. It, talk, it begins with a praise to God. It begins with a uh, praise to God for his goodness. It says, Sing aloud unto God our strength. Make a joyful noise to the God of Jacob. Take a psalm and bring hither the timbrel, the pleasant harp with the psaltery, Blow up the trumpet in the new moon in the time appointed on our solemn feast day. So the Bible describes here giving praise to God and it describes a solemn feast day, a time of memorial of thanksgiving to God for their goodness to him. And uh, and for what? Well, then the Bible gives here a brief history lesson. For this was a statute for Israel and a law of the God of Jacob. This he ordained in Joseph for a testimony when he went out through the land of Egypt. And um, the Bible then very interestingly switches persons. It uh, has up to this point been in the second person, as in Asaph, if you will, addressing the reader of the psalm. And it switches to first person, to God speaking directly to the reader. This is very interesting here. It says, where I heard a language that I understood not. I removed his shoulder from the burden, and his hands were delivered from the pots. Thou callest in trouble, and I delivered thee, and I answered thee in the secret place of thunder. I proved thee at the waters of Meribah, Selah. So God then recounts what he did for the nation of Israel, how he heard their cry in the land of Egypt when they were oppressed by Pharaoh and by his people. He saw their bitter slavery, he saw the hard bondage they were in, and... Uh, God's heart was moved with compassion for his people, and he delivered them from all their burdens. I removed their sho his shoulder from the burden, his hands were delivered from the pots. Thou callest in trouble, and I delivered thee. I answered thee in the secret place of thunder. I proved thee at the waters of Meribah. God answered them, he delivered them. He revealed himself on Mount Sinai, the secret place of thunder, where there was uh, thunderings and... Uh, where um, Moses himself said, I fear and quake exceedingly. And uh, it says, I prove thee at the waters of Meribah, at the waters of strife. The children of Israel, after Egypt, unfortunately, very quickly began to forget how, God good, had been, how, how good God had been to them. When they came to the waters of Marah, they complained because they were bitter. And God...